G'day, I'm Outback Jack. Press A to start. I need your help. There are some cracker Aussie video games out here in the bush that need rescuing. Let's go. Australia might not be the first country you think of when it comes to making video games, but Australia's been a big part of the industry for a long time. Crikey, look out, there's The Hobbit. Wait, isn't The Hobbit like a New Zealand thing? Technically, it's a book by a British author, but in 1982, one of Australia's very first video game companies, Beam Software, released this classic that became popular around the world. Oh, oh well, there you go. Along with The Hobbit, there were titles like Hungry Horace and The Way of the Exploding Fist. And while they look a little different to what we're used to today, they were revolutionary at the time and led the way for today's Aussie-made games. From stylized adventure games, who are you? To games that are a little weird and wacky, as well as games you can play on your phone. Look out, Cobber, that there is Fruit Ninja. Press B to take it back to the archives. Yes. <laughs> the games industry in Australia is now bigger than the film and music industry put together. That's how important it is. That's how central it is to people's lives. And we're the audiovisual archive for Australia and games are the biggest audiovisual um, phenomena of our time. Torsten is from the National Film and Sound Archive, which, as the name suggests, is responsible for archiving the Australian TV shows, films, songs, speeches, and any other picture or sound that has helped shape our history. Look at me. You're terrible, Miriam. Since 2019, they've been adding Australian video games to their collection, including some oldies like The Hobbit and Hungry Horace, as well as some newer games like L.A. Noir and Untitled Goose Game. Look, quick, grab that silly goose before it spits the dummy. Around the world it's done a little bit differently. Some places basically you put them on a shelf um, and that's, that's their collecting and preserving. What we do here at the National Film and Sound Archive is digitise every one of them. Recently, the National Film and Sound Archive did a big survey and found that a lot of archiving institutes around the world are struggling when it comes to preserving video games. Resourcing, I think, was, was one of the, the big issues, you know, how much money and how many people were involved in each institution. There are lots of legal issues uh, around copyright and those sort of things, which, which make preservation difficult around the world. But for me, one of the really interesting ones was that it's actually much harder to collect and preserve games that are being put out now uh, as digital-only games, particularly on things like mobile platforms, than it is games going back to the 70s and 80s that came on cassettes or cartridges or, or optical discs. The National Film and Sound Archive say they will continue to add Aussie video games to their collections. And some gaming companies have already started archiving their own. So hopefully these video games will be rescued from disappearing altogether. Wait, but who's going to archive this game? I don't know, it'll probably end up somewhere in the ABC archives. Ah. Oh yeah, no, that makes sense.